Okay, so the next thing we'd probably want to know with our equipped items is what type of equipped item are they actually? So we could make that typing another field under the equipped item, or we can make the typing tie to a class specifically. So we can extend the equipped item uh, class and let's say make like a tool class or a pickaxe class. And then inside of that class, we'll set up a function for when the body enters our area 2D, we interact with a specific type of node, such as rock, and then we'll be able to harvest from that node. Okay, so now let's go to items and create our new script. Uh, we're going to inherit from equipable item with one P. And uh, let's start with something like a harvesting tool dot GD script. Um, the reason for this is that there'll be multiple tools like pickaxes and hammers and maybe like a shovel later on, uh, which are all going to harvest from different types of nodes. So a lot of the code we can just rewrite. It's a lot of the code we can just write here inside harvesting tool.gd. We might not even technically need to create separate um, scripts for a pickaxe or a hammer. So let's start with this create and uh, then we can edit our harvesting tool.gd. So every harvesting tool is going to have a harvest function, which is going to take a, a resource node and it's going to do something with it. We'll pass for right now. I guess we'll add something like a damage variable at the top. We could call it damage or we could call it like amount to harvest. So um, let's say at export var, uh, I'll say min damage and Let's make that an int and default it to one. And then at export var max damage. And we'll make that an int and default it, let's say to one as well. So when we actually harvest, we can randomly generate between these two values to make it a little bit more interesting. So sometimes when we harvest a node, we get one ore or wood or whatever. And then sometimes we'd get more up to the maximum amount. Uh, depends on exactly which tool we have equipped. Okay. So uh, let's save that and then we'll create a new harvesting item. So let's do new resource. So we're looking for a, uh, okay, we haven't added the class name. So back out of that class name, harvesting tool. Okay, now let's right click new resource harvesting. We got harvesting tool.gd and let's create this as copper pickaxe. Uh, dot TRES. Yeah, okay, we can start with that for now. So if we click on our harvesting pickaxe, we can see we have the display name. So we know this is a copper pickaxe, so we're going to do copper pickaxe. And then we got to set the texture. So under tools, we'll drag in the pickaxe copper here. And then our min damage, max damage, we'll leave that set to one. Um, now for a second, let's jump back over to the uh, hand equip script. So uh, whenever our area 2D has a collision with a body, then what we'll basically do is uh, we'll check if the equipped item actually has a function to interact with a body. So let's do something like if equipped item dot has method, and let's say something like interact with a body here as the name of the method. So doing it this way, we don't necessarily check the exact class of the equipped item, but we just see that whatever script we have attached to it, it actually has this function. So we just need to make sure that if we're creating different types of tools or weapons, that anything that is going to interact with a body deal damage or whatever actually has this function here. So just a different way of doing things. So if the uh, equipped item has the function, then we're going to run it. So equipped item dot interact with body and we're going to pass in the body. Okay. And then that basically passes everything over into our equipped item script. So this basically passes the flow into whatever kind of equipable item we have that is going to um, use the interact with body function. So a harvesting tool is going to interact with bodies. So let's go to harvesting tool. And um, yeah, I guess We'll write that function down here. Function interact with body. It's going to take a body. Okay. And uh, what we're going to check on the body is if it is a resource node. So let's go back to resource node up here. So we do have the class name resource node. So we'll check if the body has that. 
So in harvesting tool, we'll check if body is resource node, then we can continue. And I think for right now, it would be a good time to test print. Interact with resource node. Okay, so we can uh, basically run the game and see if that will actually work there. So let's hit play. And let's walk around and watch the output console. Okay, so let's try swinging at it. Okay, so currently it's not doing anything. Um, let's see. In the player, we have this test item. Ah, uh, the test item is still an equipped item. It's not what we actually want. It's not a harvesting tool. So you can see that uh, the test item, which is just an equipped item, doesn't actually do anything when it interacts with a um, when it interacts with the body. Let's try with the copper pickaxe. Drop that in there. So it updates here. Let's hit play, and let's go walk towards that uh, resource node and see if we get the interaction to occur. I'll swing at it. Still technically uh, doing nothing. All right, so let's kind of debug that a little bit. I'll figure out what's going on. So first, let's jump into equipped item and let's see if we're getting here. Let's even see if the area 2D body entered is running at all. And then let's add in harvesting tool, add this little bit here where we'll see that if we're checking if it's a resource node. So if we hit play, uh, we can come down here and see that nothing's still happening. And I just noticed what's actually going on. So our area 2D isn't actually connected to our hand equip. Of course, that would be because we changed nodes. So we need to go to the node area 2D um, next to the inspector, and we need to take body entered, and we need to reconnect that to the hand equip node. So connect that there. Okay, it's going to use the same function, but now the signal is actually connected. So signals can be connected like this, or it can be connected in code. Now let's hit play and see how far we get with our um, interaction. Okay, so we moved there, and the body is probably going to be something like itself. So let's see, what item is that actually? So our area already interacted with the body, probably the character's body. Um, so we're just going to pass from there, and then we can continue. Okay, so now we're going to check if the body is of a type resource node. So it is passing into harvesting tool. So let's continue from there. And let's see, did we get the output? We did not because I checked that the body was not of type resource node. So let's watch the output still. And I'll go back to the game and let's actually walk towards those resource nodes. So when we get here, we get interact with resource node. Up here, interact with resource node. And here, interact with resource node. Now, uh, of course, we don't want the interaction to occur all the time. We only want it when we're actually swinging the pack axe. So that'll be something we set up in a minute. Um, but so far, we actually are getting those interactions, which is good. So next, if we know that we are interacting with a resource node, we want to check what type of resource node the uh, body is or what tools it can be harvested with. So to do that, let's create some classifications for what type of uh, resource node our rock actually is. So obviously we want to say it's a rock. So what we can do is create a resource node script, which will identify our resource node as a rock and then create a field, drag it in here, say that this resource node is a rock. Okay, so now in our resource types folder, let's right click new script. So let's create the script for our type. And uh, what we're going to call it is something like uh, type of, I guess we'll just say node type dot GD. Okay, yeah, we can do that. And or maybe resource node type actually. So resource underscore node underscore type. Okay, now we'll double click into there. Let's do class name here, which is going to be resource node type. Save that. And uh, then we can right click in our types folder and start actually creating those resources. So new resource, resource node type. So the first type we'll create in here will just be a mineable type. So this could be anything from a rock to a ore vein or just anything you can swing a pickaxe at. If you want to be uh, more precise, you could call it rock type or uh, an ore node type or ice crystals type, whatever. But I think this will be uh, specific enough for our purposes. So let's hit save here. Okay, now we have this type. We need to assign it into our resource node rock tall. So in resource node rock tall, let's add a export variable at export var uh, node type. And we'll say resource node type as the resource that we're going to set here. So control S to save that. Now we can click on our node and we can assign the node type here. Um, we could actually make this an array even if we wanted to. 
um, having multiple node types per nodes. So we'll just drag my mole.tres into here. So now we can just check if we're interacting with a node, if it's a mineable node, then we'll be able to mine it with a pickaxe. So let's hit control S. Um, and then let's go back to the harvesting tool. And here we actually are going to need an array uh, because a harvesting tool like a pickaxe may be able to interact with multiple types of node types. So let's add a new export var, uh, export var, uh, let's say affected nodes. And this will be, if I'm doing this right, an array of uh, resource node type. Okay, and then save. Okay, now let's go back to the player scene and we'll look at this. So we have the affected nodes here in the copper pickaxe.tres. So we can actually edit it here. So let's click here and add one node type, and that is going to be mineable.tres. Okay, cool. Um, so that, that should be all we need there. And now back on the resource node, as I mentioned, we can make this an array as well. So just in case we ever need to have multiple types per node, let's let's do that as well. So an array and then square brackets of resource node type and then we'll change node type to node types then we can just take the array and expand its size to one drag in mineable.tres into here and uh, that's all we need to do to set our resource node as a mineable type and then specify for our copper pickaxe and items that it can affect mineable resource node types so what we'll do now is whenever we have a match then we'll allow the pickaxe to interact with the mineable nodes like a rock so in our harvesting tool .gd, we're going to check if the affected nodes or affected types, I guess we should say. Yeah, let's call that affected types, control S, and I guess we need to reset it here. So we'll just add everything back in uh, to the array. We'll check that if whatever's in this array matches at least one in the resource node, then we'll actually interact with that node. In this case, that's going to mean we're going to run the harvest function on the resource node. Okay, so what we can do is loop through all the affected types and see if the resource node matches any of them. So for type and affected types, and uh, let's make sure that has one P there. We'll check, let's say body dot node types dot has. Okay, since that should be an array. And we'll check if that has the type. And that's going to be an if statement. So if the body node types has the type, then uh, we're going to basically allow it to interact with the body. So we'll print, let's say, match found at type, and let's do type dot resource name, and on the node on plus body dot name. All right. Okay, let me expand that so you can see the whole line here. So we check for all of the types. If the body has any of those types assigned, like mineable, then we'll match the type and then we can do something with it, like do a resource node.harvest. So we'll probably move the harvest function actually into the resource node instead of the equipable tool. So let's see if that will actually run first. Let's uh, walk over to our resource nodes, okay? And then we have match found at type. Okay, it didn't actually give us a name there on resource node rock tall, but we are getting those matches. So that's good. Uh, so why doesn't this work? Can we do just plus type then? Let's, let's see if we can do um, string on the type. So just converting it into a string, will that work? And then uh, let's walk around. Let's get that. Nope, that's just the resource ID. So what we might want is a display name on the resource node type. So let's uh, give all of them a export var display name, which is a type string. Okay, and well, now we can click on mineable.tres and just say mineable. Okay, and then in our harvesting tool, we just want to do type dot display name. Okay, now let's hit play. Now let's walk over here. And now we can see match found at type mineable on uh, resource node rock tall. Okay, so that's good. We can basically harvest the nodes now. We just need to create the harvest function. So as I mentioned, I'm going to move the harvest function over to the resource nodes since every resource node can be harvested. And I guess it makes more sense to do it at that level. So let's 
do resource node.gd and I'll paste in the harvest function. We don't need to know the resource node. We're already on the resource node, but what we do need to know is amount. And this is going to be a integer. So we need to know how much we want to harvest from the node. Okay. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take the current resources and subtract. So minus equals the amount. And then once we've run out of resources, we do want to remove the node. So we can do that as a setter function. So let's do set uh, value. So we're setting the new value. If value is less than or equal to zero. So if the value is less than or equal to zero, we're going to queue three on the node, which basically just means remove the node from the scene. So our harvest function, we remove the resources. If, so if the resources drop below zero, it's going to remove it from the scene. And uh, later, we'll also add in like an animation here so that uh, when it is removed, it'll, you know, be more obvious than just disappearing immediately. Okay, um, now uh, back in harvesting tool.gd, um, we already know that it's matching, so we can remove this kind of debug. Unless you want it to be there, I think we could still do like a uh, print debug. And then let's uh, come down here and do body dot harvest. And we're going to do harvest on the amount. So we have the min damage and the max damage. We need to do a random integer value between those two. So let's do rand i dot range or underscore range. And the range is the min damage to the max damage. So let's give a comment here. If the body interacted is a resource node that matches one of the affected set for this tool, then the resource node will be harvested between the min and max amounts for this tool. And I'm actually going to take this bit here. Let's do a uh, control R and do a find and replace. So we're going to take min damage and we're going to replace that with, um, let's say min amount replace all and let's also do max damage and replace with uh, max amount replace all i think that's just a little bit clearer we're not exactly damaging a node though that makes some sense we're just harvesting it so i'm going to use min amount and max amount as the uh, words here so to finish that comment between the min and the maximum all right cool okay so let's test that out in our player scene we can see that the copper pickaxe has a min amount and a max amount of one. So every time it hits a node, it's going to generate exactly one resource, which in this case just means we're moving it from the node so far. And then the rock resource has a starting resources of one. So if it gets hit once, it should remove from the scene. Let's hit play and test that out. So let's go up to our nodes. I'll run into it. Oh, boom, it got harvested. And we can see the debug message there in the console. Let's harvest some more resources. Boom, harvested harvested. Now, uh, that didn't really do anything yet. It's just decreasing an integer value. But now that we know that we're interacting with it, we can actually generate the resources, pick them up, add them to the player's inventory. And uh, then we'll kind of be on our way to getting this resource harvesting thing going. So let's create 